scientists and health experts have been warning about the threat of a pandemic for decades, but those calls for action went largely unheard. Our country has been caught unprepared for the coronavirus. Scientists have also been ringing the alarm on climate change for equally as long. So will we face a similar reckoning? Unprecedented fires, record temperatures, melting ice, rising seas, unrivaled storms. Global climate change is playing out in real time. So why aren't all of us listening? We have the problem of solution aversion. We don't think there are any solutions to climate change that are consistent or compatible with our values. We think the only solutions are socialist or communist. The science is clear. The science is unambiguous. But there are some that believe the science but are fearful about how the governments have to respond to it. Those fears seem to have played out here over the last two months. If I get corona, I get corona. At the end of the day, I'm not going to let it stop me from partying. We're going to have fewer fatalities from this than from the flu. This was not and is not a pandemic. Many Americans resistant to the seriousness of the threat COVID-19 posed until the grim numbers were piling up. What we've seen is that when the risk is finally staring us in the eyeballs, we are willing to act in proportion to that risk. But when that risk seems far off, it's happening in China, but not here, or it's happening in the future, but not now, we are not willing to act. That is what worries climate scientists. By the time that the impacts of climate change are staring every single one of us, nearly 8 billion people around the planet in the eyeballs, it will be too late to avoid the most dangerous impacts. So just the connection between our risk perception and our willingness to act and how we can accelerate connecting the dots. The actions we need to take around climate change, namely greater reliance on renewable energy, eating less meat and more plants uh, to reduce carbon emissions there, climate solutions are in fact pandemic solutions. But none of these solutions are as drastic as the social distancing and stay-at-home orders much of the world is facing. The collective action here around this event is unprecedented in recent United States history. And the sacrifices that people are making left and right go way beyond anything that would be asked of folks in any of these other solution sets. Like the coronavirus pandemic, so much resistance revolves around cost. We're not going to let the cure be worse than the problem. There are more important things than living. Many are anxious to choose restarting the economy over prioritizing safety. The same argument engulfs climate change. One of the most common myths we hear about climate change is, oh, well, it's going to destroy the economy if we actually try to fix it. It's estimated that I think about 90 corporations are responsible for something like 70% of carbon emissions since the dawn of the industrial era. And those few are the richest corporations in the world. The majority of them made their, their money off digging up, processing, selling, or making things that burn fossil fuels. And when comparing the impacts avoided by meeting the Paris targets in the US, with the cost of actually achieving the Paris emission reductions required by the U.S., we see that we would break even over between five to 20 years. We spend about three, just over three trillion dollars every year in the United States on health care. Think about the money we could save simply by reducing air pollution, people eating healthier diets, and the money, the potentially trillion dollars or more, we would have at our disposal to now invest in all the things that we really need to do and frankly preventing climate change. Over 70 percent of new electricity installed around the world comes from clean energy sources. There's more jobs in clean energy than there are in fossil fuels in the United States. So why are we not doing this? Any reasonable economic estimate, it makes all the sense in the world to cut our emissions. But the people who are making the decisions make those decisions often based on quarterly returns. And that is one of the biggest reasons why we see this mismatch between the need to act and the failure to do so. The only thing we cannot afford is climate inaction. Tackling big issues means having important and sometimes tough conversations. Climate experts stress that denying the science means we aren't having the political debate that our policymakers need to engage in to get ahead of the climate crisis before it's too late. Angie Lastman, NBC6 News.